But first, to understand why the Yes campaign for The Voice is in such diabolical strife, you just had to listen today to the National Press Club speech by Professor Marsha Langton, who co-wrote the blueprint for The Voice that the government's following. What a shocker, but also fascinating. It's like watching a crocodile trying to waltz, because whatever Langton was trying to do, she was exactly the wrong person to do it. Here was her big pitch for changing our constitution to divide us by race and give people identifying as Aboriginal their own advisory parliament. The intention is to unite Australians. Our objective is to overcome division, to build a future reconciled with our past, to shape our country into a co cohesive whole by including Indigenous Australians. Well, fact, fact check, Indigenous Australians are already included in our society and politics. You, just take a look at our federal parliament. No fewer than 11 politicians now claiming to be Aboriginal. But Langton, of all people, saying the voice is about uniting us? She's a hater. She was many years ago a member of the National Committee of the Communist League, a leader of a Marxist movement crusading to destroy capitalism. Then she joined the equally Marxist Socialist Workers' Party. And now she's into race politics. And today, totally undercut her message, you know, bring the Australians together, by smashing no campaigners like Jacinta Nampajimpa Price and Warren Mundina's liars and no voters as racist fools. The arguments of Dutton, Price, Mundine and others in the no campaign are specious and increasingly absurd, appealing to their base with claims that the proposal will racially divide the nation and create two classes of Australians based on race. This is utter nonsense. These lies, however, are effective with a growing minority. They're very clever falsehoods. They appeal to the uh, long-held tropes of discrimination. But when it came to telling falsehoods, Langton told plenty herself. Another falsehood's been thrown around. Indigenous Affairs gets $30 billion a year. I think it was Tony Abbott who said that. It's a complete falsehood. And it's a ridiculous statistic. In fact, in relation to the health budget, Indigenous Australians get less per head than other Australians. Well, it's Langton who's wrong. The last time the Productivity Commission checked in 2014, more than $30 billion even then was being spent annually in Aborigines and Torres Strait Islanders, twice as much per head than on other Australians. Twice. Another untruth. It does not give us any more power than the hundreds of other advisory committees. Would there be an obligation? I don't know. That's up to the parliament. An obligation on uh, the parliament to seek advice from the voice? I don't know. That's up to the parliament. Again, totally false. Those hundreds of other advisory committees don't have what the voice would. They aren't in the constitution. The voice would be. And they don't have the power, not just to give advice, but to make representations backed by courts, as the voice sure would. And even Professor Greg Craven, a constitutional law expert who advised Langton on how to design the voice, says, if Parliament does do something before the voice is given its opinion, its representation, then there's a possibility the voice could get the courts to delay the government's decision until it does. What other advisory body has the power of that? Now, I could go on fact-checking Langton, but I'll leave the last example to the woman herself when she said, we need this voice to finally give Aborigines a say on government programs that affect them. But in the same breath, she said, well, the voice can't be allowed to push aside other Aboriginal organisations like the Coalition of Peaks that are, in fact, already advising governments. Importantly, we recommended that local and regional voices would not displace or undermine bodies with existing statutory roles or specific functions, but provide links for involvement. This was particularly important for the Coalition of Peaks, which was developing at that time the National Partnership Agreement with all Australian governments to close the gap. So there are Aboriginal organisations already drawing up programs with the government. Langton says so. So why do we need this voice? And so much for unity when Langton says that, well, the Albanese government should now prepare for the defeat of the voice and of the government itself because the Liberals were a rabble who would actively try to hurt Aborigines. And note another embarrassing confession. 
I do hope that the government sets out an agenda for reform before the rabble take over and turn a no vote into a mandate to cause us even further harm. She's a joke. Langton is saying there that the government should prepare for the defeat of the voice by giving its agenda now for fixing Aboriginal disadvantage. So she's actually admitting, hello, we don't actually need a voice to start changing things for the better. This government can and should actually get cracking now. That's what she said. And the pity is that the government is instead spending all its time and $360 million of your money on a referendum on The Voice that every day just encourages the haters, like Marsha Langton.